All right then, so we've seen how to create receiver functions to associate functions with a particular type like this. I want to create two more now. So I'm going to create one to update the tip right here and also one to add items to this items map right here. Now I'm going to take these out that we added in the last lesson. So we start with an empty map and we're going to use a function to add items. So let's create these functions down here. So first of all, one to update the tip. So func and then parentheses to take in the bill like this. This associates it with bill objects. Then the name of the function, which I'm going to call update tip. And this takes in a tip argument, which will be of type float64. That's what we want to update the tip to. And remember that matches the type right here. It doesn't return anything, so we don't need to specify that. And all I'm going to do inside is take the bill, say dot tip and set it equal to the new tip that we take in. OK, so that's to update the tip. Next, I want to create a function to add an item to the bill. All right, so let's create a function to do this func. And then again, we take the bill to make it a receiver function. We'll call this add item. And inside, we take two arguments. First of all, the name of the item, which is going to be the key inside the map, the string. And then secondly, the price of the item, which is going to be a float 64. Remember, for the map, we said the keys must be strings and the values are float 64. All right, so again, we don't return anything inside here. All I want to do is add a new item to the map. So we say b.items, which is the map name. And to add a new key, it's square brackets, the name of the key, which is a string, the name in our case that we pass in, and we set it equal to the price. Simple. OK, so if we try this, is it going to work? Well, let's go over here. And I'm just going to use the update tip method first of all. So I'll take my bill and call update tip. And I'm going to pass in $10, something like that. Now, I need to add the tip into the formatted string that we create right here. So over here, there's no sign of the tip. We just cycle through the items and add them up. But I also want to output the tip as well. So I'm going to add in a line right here before the total, which is going to be the tip. So we're doing the same kind of thing here as the total. All we're doing is creating another formatted string, which we're adding to FS, this string right here. And inside we have a label on the left, which is tip with some spacing. And on the right, this value is b.tip. So it accesses the tip from the bill. All right then, so is it gonna work? We've added the tip right here. Are we gonna see it on the formatted bill? Well, let's give this a whirl. I'm gonna clear out the console right here to give us a bit of room and then run the files and we don't see a tip, it's still zero dollars. Now you might already know why this has happened because we have talked about this briefly in past videos. And it's because, remember, when we call a function, when we take in arguments into a function, we said that it creates copies, right? But also on receiver functions, I mentioned in the last video, we also take a copy of the bill. We don't actually take in the bill right here that we call it on. We just copy this bill and pass that into the receiver function. And all we're doing is updating the copy of the bill right here. So we said that when we're creating a copy, if we created a pointer and passed that into a function, it creates a copy of the pointer. But then inside the function, we can update that to update the original value because it's still pointing to the original value, right? So what we could do is pass in a pointer here instead to say, look, we want a pointer to a bill. And inside the function, we can dereference this. So I could say, this is how we dereference a struct, parentheses like this around the struct, and then the dereferencer, okay? So this dereferences it now, and then we access the tip on the original value and update it. And this is gonna work, but, when we're working with structs like this, we don't actually need to dereference it. If we take in a pointer, then Go is automatically going to dereference it for us. So that's a nice shortcut. We don't have to do anything else in here. We just have to pass in the pointer or say we want to receive the pointer as the bill. Now, we don't have to do anything special over here when we call it. Go is automatically, when it looks at this, going to pass in the pointer to the bill and make a copy of that to pass in instead of the copy of the value itself. Does that make sense? And since we're now passing in a copy of the pointer, when we're updating it, 
which is automatically being dereferenced, then it's going to update that original value. So a rule of thumb, whenever we're calling a method where we're updating the value, we pass in a pointer. So I'm going to do that right here as well because we're actually changing the item right here, okay, updating it. Now also, there's another reason you might want to pass pointers into functions or receiver functions, and that is because then we're not making copies every time we call a function. So if I was to call this function quite frequently, then I'd be creating a new copy every time of the bill. If I just passed in a pointer, I'm only making a copy of the pointer. Now, if the bill object was very large and very complex, then to make a copy of that is more work than to make a copy of the pointer, right? So I might want to pass in a pointer here as well. And I don't have to do anything different inside here. Everything's still going to work the same because remember, for structs, pointers are automatically dereferenced. So we can still get the original value by doing nothing extra inside here. And generally, you will either see receiver functions all with pointers or all without pointers. So I'm going to keep them all as pointers. And then hopefully this is now going to work. If I run this again, we should see the tip now be $10. So, yeah, we can see tip is $10. Now, we've not updated the total here to include the tip. So, let's do that. Right where we use the total, I'll say total plus B dot tip and save that. Run it again to make sure this has worked. And we can see now the total is $10. All right, so let's try using this function as well over here in the main file. So, I'm going to say my bill dot add item. And the item I'm going to add is onion soup and then a price i'll just say like 450 or something like that now i also want to call this a few more times but instead of me typing this out i'm going to copy it from the course files and we can see we have three more items veg pie toffee pudding and coffee so if we save this now hopefully we're going to see all of these added to the formatted string and see them in the console and we do and that looks a lot better we're getting there so we have all of the items the tip and then the running total of all of these things at the bottom. Cool.